How's it going guys? It's been about a month since I've been on here. I had all of my content planned up until April where we were going to start a really big project and we've had some setbacks and so the start date has been pushed back. It's really kind of in the perfect time of year because we have had a chance to kind of work on all of the outdoor spaces before summer comes. We have a lot of spaces that we just haven't been able to focus on that are outdoors that are like overgrown and just really need like cleaned up. So I've been filming some of that and if I get to a point where we have a finished product that I'm really happy with and I feel like it would be inspirational to share, I will. So we'll see once we get it done if it's gonna still be a good time of year to share that. Even with everything else going on over the past month, that has not stopped me from treasure hunting. I've been going to my favorite antique stores and hitting up estate sales and we are officially at the very beginning of garage sale season. You know that makes me so happy because garage sales are truly my favorite place to find all of my vintage finds. I thought since I don't have a walkthrough of any of the antique stores or anything to share with you today that at the end of the video I would give you some tips and tricks on finding great vintage pieces at garage sales. Garage sale prices cannot be beat. So I think it would be really beneficial if you just don't know where to start when it comes to garage sailing and how to find them and where to look. Uh, stay tuned because at the end of the video after I get done with this like pretty good sized haul we have I'm going to share some tips and tricks on that for you. Let's get into the haul. So today's haul is pretty good size. I'm like I don't even really know where to start. Let's just start with this. I found this book at an estate sale and it is the classic story Black Beauty. I've never read the book but when I was little this is one of the movies that I really loved. I know we owned it on VHS. It's been so long since I've watched the movie. I don't really even fully remember the story so you know maybe one of these days I will actually read the book but I just thought the cover of it was so beautiful and let's see what year. There's lots Lots of writing on the inside, so she's definitely not in the best condition. I also have the binding is a little torn up, but I like the aged look of it. As you know, let me see if I can find the date on this. It's funny, sometimes these older books, it's hard to find the, the dates on them. I think I Google searched this and found it and it had the date on it. So let's see. 190 something is what this person, I can't read the whole date on it, of course. When I originally looked this up, there were quite a few of them and I'm not seeing very many on here listed now. I will keep searching once I'm done filming this and in editing I'll put the year that this one is from on the screen because I'm not able to find it. And it's it, it very well may be in here somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. Anyway, $5 for this. I thought it was just a really, really lovely cover. The next find that I got was this Wexford candy dish. You guys know I love the Wexford line. I saw this at a garage sale. It was $2. I love the lid on this. What I actually was thinking would be really lovely to do with this is to pour a candle inside. Like you could do a three wick candle, I believe, or at least a two wick. But how beautiful would this be on a table as a candle? You've got the little lid for it and everything. So Antique Candle Co., I have tons of their candles. They have candle kits. So I think I'm gonna order one and pour a candle in this. I think that would be perfect. And then of course, if I don't wanna like keep using it for a candle, I can clean it out and then use it as a serving dish or whatever. So lots of options with these types of things, but I had been looking for a while for one that had a lid on it that was like a good size like this. So $2 on that one. I was really excited about this next find. I found these at an estate sale. It is a set of silhouettes and they're just the perfect size to put on a really small wall stacked. They were $12 each. You know I'm a sucker for the top hats and I just thought he was so cute. This one is 1840 and this one is, well I can't tell if it's 1831 or 1838 but I am pretty sure these are reproductions of 
old silhouettes. They're in pretty good condition. This one has a little nick um, out of the frame on the side, if you can see that. Um, but otherwise, they're in great condition. They're a cute little pair. So I got them for $12 each at an estate sale. And while we're kind of looking at little frames, I found this one this past week at another estate sale and I thought she was so pretty. This was kind of hidden in a box. This estate sale that I went to was huge and it was the strangest house with like door after door after door. It was so confusing. It was like a maze in there. And like every time you would turn, there'd be another door with a new room and you're like, how does this even, it, the layout just like didn't even make sense. But um, they had an area in the basement that had tons of frames and I got a lot of frames. I wish I had gotten there sooner because I saw in the pictures, which I'm going to talk about how I like can kind of see what estate sales have um, prior to going to them. So I know which ones to go to at the end of the video, but there were some that I didn't get a chance to grab because I got there later than, you know, right when they opened. But I did find her kind of hidden in a box. I think if, if she hadn't been like hidden, she probably would have been gone by the time I got there. But love this frame, has this velvet red mat on it, which is beautiful. Victorian woman. Oh, I just love this one. I think it's so pretty. It's got the little cameo mark on the back. She's very, very pretty. So again, this actually, you know, I could maybe pair all of these on a little wall. I don't know for sure that I'll do that, but they might actually all be really cute together. Um, I am gonna show you everything actually that I got from this estate sale because all together it cost me $9 and I don't know how much each individual thing was priced. So they didn't have everything priced. Like I said, this was a huge house with tons of stuff. So I got this and then I also grabbed some frames. Um, I got this one, which I thought was just like a nice unique shape. I believe all of the little frames were like a dollar, but again, I not everything was priced, so I'm not for sure. Love the black and the gold on there. It doesn't have a backing or anything, but you know, we can, we can solve that problem. And I grabbed this one, just like a gilded gold frame. I'm really loving having little pieces like this. I love them for gallery walls, or again, if you have a smaller wall space, it just adds like an extra little something. And there's actually a couple places in the kitchen once we finish it that are kind of smaller areas that little pieces like this are gonna be great for. So I got those two. And I got this one, it's a little bit bigger. This one is a nine by 11. I usually will get printable artwork and put them in these frames and I don't use glass anyway because I like it to kind of look more like a painting. So I don't mind that they don't have glass. I don't mind that they don't have a backing. I can always get my prints printed on a mat board and or like a foam board. And yeah, so grabbed that one. I also got a couple of mirrors at that place. So this one was down there with all of the frames kind of hidden. Thought that was really cute. So this could be a nice addition to our mirror wall or just a gallery wall. I don't know exactly where I'm gonna use this yet, but I grabbed this one. It's got this little tag on the back. And they also had this mirror. So again, I don't know what the price was on this, but I thought this was really pretty. So yeah, all of the three frames, the two mirrors and the cameo were $9 total. So I feel like that was a really good, good price. So while I'm on frames, I have a couple of other ones. They're not like real exciting, but I'll share them with you anyway. I got these at, hmm, where did I get these? I think at a garage sale. There was this little one, just a cute little frame. It has, uh, you know, like a backing, which is nice, but then it's also got the little hanging piece for vertical or horizontal, which is always nice. Less work for me. So I thought that one was cute. I really don't even remember, I'm trying to think. I don't remember where I got this. I'm pretty sure it was at a garage sale and I'm sure it was for like, I think $2 or something like I got, I got these things and I think I got a toy for Jameson. So it was, they were really inexpensive, 
but then this one as well. Nothing super special about this one, but it does kind of already have like a little hanging thing and you know, the tone and the color of it fits in with all my other frames. I always pick up if I find like a really unique frame that I love or something really pretty, um, but I'm kind of starting to pick up some of these more plain ones again, just so that I have more frames because I've gotten really low on my stock of frames that I don't have readily available if I'm like decorating a new space or something. So this piece is really, really pretty. I got this at the antique shop and when I saw this, I thought this would be really cute to put like recipe cards in and have, it's got these little holes so you could put like a couple of pencils or something in there and display this in the kitchen. So one of the elements that I'm really wanting to incorporate into the kitchen design is lots of architectural salvage pieces. And I thought this would be perfect. It's that nice like rich wood tone. It's got some ornate detailing on it. All of the things I love in one piece. So it said that it was a sewing drawer. It seems pretty shallow for that, but of course all the sewing machines were different. So it very well may have been for that. Uh, I tried to look it up to see if I could find exactly what it was for with like the little holes and stuff. And I didn't find an answer to my question, but I did find one that was incredibly similar on Etsy for sale for $6.50. So I will link it down below if somebody is looking for something like this or you also think you could use something like this in an area. Um, so yeah, th there's one that looks very, very, very similar to it. So then I also got this from a garage sale. This is one of the first garage sales that I went to this year. And it's just this little hammered copper footed planter, I suppose. I have been on a planter kick since I've been incorporating more live house plants into our home. I think it'd be really sweet again in the kitchen. So to put a little house plant in it and then put it in the kitchen, just cause I feel like copper always makes me think of a kitchen. So I think this would be really cute with a little plant in it on some shelves that we're gonna have in there. I paid $7 for it, which I feel like was kind of high for a garage sale price, especially when you see the next one that I'm gonna show you. It makes me feel like I way overpaid, although, I mean, I know this is really, it's $7, it's not that big of a deal, but the one that I found just a couple of days ago, I'm still, in shock. It is huge. This is what sold me. I love the lion's head handle latch or whatever you want to call it, handle thing. So this is technically a coal and ash bucket that you would have by your fireplace. I could not believe that they were selling it for $10. So I looked online. This is actually a pretty common style and I was able to find tons of them. But the prices were ranged a lot. I saw some for $75. I saw some for $250. I then went to eBay and searched their sold items and I saw some that had sold for like $35. So the prices were kind of all over the board, but no matter what, I know that I got such a good deal on this. It's so beautiful. Leave down in the comments, let me know what would you use this for? Would you set it next to your fireplace? and put, I think the guy said they had like magazines and stuff in it. Obviously our fireplace is just decorative. So I could get some fake logs or not fake, but you know, I could get some logs and things and put it in here just for looks. Um, I could use it as a planter. I feel like there's endless options. So let me know, what would you do? What would you do with this? I love it. It's so cool. This one came from the antique store. I think I paid $9 for this. Nine to 12, somewhere in there. I remember it being kind of like around the $10 range. It was either a little less or a little more and I can't remember exactly which, but I thought this was so cool looking. It's got just this gorgeous kind of like floral design and these really pretty handles. You can see the, the little tag hanger here. Let's take this off. Okay, really pretty handles on it. The coloring is so pretty and dark and moody. I just love it. There's like some grape vines kind of on the bottom there. And this one actually already has a drainage hole in it. So definitely a planter. So I 
am gonna have to get something really pretty to put in here. I don't think I would wanna leave this one outside uncovered. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna put it. This might end up being like a house plant thing. I would have to find like a tray to put it on that was aesthetically pleasing because I don't wanna take away from the beautiful style of it, but I'm a sucker for urn style planters of any kind. And I just thought this one was so unique and so interesting. Like I said, I somewhere between nine and $12 for this. This one's an iron trivet. So you would have put your hot iron on it back in the, back in the day. And it's got George Washington on it. Brass, just thought it was really cool looking. Although this would have been used for an iron, a hot iron to keep it from burning the surface. I thought this would be great in our kitchen as just kind of a unique old world style piece. And you could definitely still use it as a trivet for a pan, like a saucepan or something like that. So it's nice and heavy. And I saw tons of these on eBay and I think there were probably some on Etsy. So if you're looking for something similar, you could definitely find one. Really cool piece. So then I found these salt and pepper shakers at a garage sale. I got them for $2. And the one thing I can't figure out is how I'm going to differentiate between salt and pepper because they have the same amount of holes on top. They look exactly the same. Um, I was thinking I could tie a little ribbon on the base of one or, I mean, obviously I could mark on the bottom of them if I needed to, but maybe you guys have a cuter idea. So share down below if you have a cute idea on how I can differentiate between the two in an aesthetically pleasing way. Um, but anyway, two bucks for these. I thought this was a fun little, a fun little find. I'm obviously looking heavily for kitchen and kind of outdoor stuff at the current moment. And speaking of, I also found this silver butter dish. I love the ornate detailing on it. And with this one, it already has a glass butter dish holder. So I think I probably would have felt a little strange putting butter just directly on the silver. Uh, but since it already came with a dish, I was like sold on it. I obviously need to clean it. it. I will run that glass piece through the dishwasher before I actually use it and make sure to clean it all up on the inside. I will leave the patina because I love the like tarnished look on my silver. I know that's not for everyone. You could totally polish these up and make them bright and shiny again if you want to, but I like the kind of dark distressed look about it. And yeah, I got it for three bucks. So I feel like that was a good find. This was from an estate sale. Up next, I got a candlestick. I have stopped buying just regular brass candlesticks because I have so many of them, but I only have a few that have the drip pan on them. So I've been grabbing those when I come across them. And this one kind of has a unique little handle on it. I just thought it was cute. So I got this for $2 at a garage sale. And uh, yeah, so have you guys seen the, there's been like a, I don't know if you would call it like a TikTok trend, but basically there's been a video going around of a mom saying that she's been lighting a candle and like having it on her dining room table during dinners. She's got young kids and it has totally like calmed them down and just they have been like sitting there and eating their food. And so we actually have been doing that with one of my other candlesticks that I already had. And it does kind of work. Like Jameson, he, he's four, so he's still kind of all over the place, but he loves the candle being lit at the table. Like he, it just makes it feel like special. So when he saw that I got another one, he was very excited about it because he's loving the candle lit dinners. And lastly, we have this push pin board, which does not look like something I would typically pick up. However, I have a vision for it. So I found this image on Pinterest of a desk area and I thought this was so, so cute. Jameson has a reading corner in his room. If you remember, I set it up with a little like, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Like a little tent kind of thing that hangs from the ceiling. It's so cute. He enjoys playing there sometimes, but honestly, he doesn't use it that much. So. 
I am thinking a more functional use of the space would be to set up a little desk, do something kind of like this. He loves coloring and drawing. He's big into it right now. And I think that's something that he could use for years and years and years. So while I feel like his room is very much a design that will grow with him, I feel like there will be things like this that will need to be swapped out. And as his interests change, it's fun to kind of just evolve the space a little bit to be, you know, suitable for his needs. So I thought what I could do, because I wanna have a little place for him to hang his like drawings. Obviously this isn't very big, but like his favorite drawings or whatever he wants to hang up, um, or we can put, you know, decorative things on it. I thought this would be a really nice addition. I love the arch to it. That's something that we have like arch doorways throughout our house. So um, I loved that detail and this trim on it is really traditional looking. So I don't love the blue. And he doesn't have any blue in his room. I guess it's maybe a gray. It's kind of a gray blue. Um, but I thought what I could do is paint this to look like wood. So I haven't really done a ton of faux wood painting, but it's such a like thin piece of trim that I feel like I could probably make this look like wood without it being too difficult to create that faux wood finish. So I will probably try to make it look like a dark walnut because I don't I don't want to deal with like sanding it down and trying to do that. I don't know how high quality this, you know, this trim is, but I feel like I could, I could do that. If it doesn't work out, I can paint that black or just a dark brown. So yeah, I feel like this is easily something that I could incorporate into his little desk corner. So yeah, I'm on the lookout for pieces to complete a little desk area in his room. And of course I'll share that when the time comes. So that concludes our haul. Let's talk a little bit about finding vintage treasures in your area, specifically garage sailing, because I often hear there's nothing good at my garage sales, like I never find anything. And I have a few tips that might be helpful as you're hunting for garage sales and looking for vintage treasures and maybe how you can kind of increase your chances at finding some. Obviously, this is my experience and it's based off of my area. So this may not work for everywhere, but it's definitely some things that you can try. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is look on Facebook and see if you can find a garage sale group for your area. The nice thing about this is you can see pictures a lot of times of their garage sales and what they have available to sell. So you can see what type of garage sale it is and if there's pieces that you're interested in. I utilize the Facebook group all the time. So that's my first tip is go to Facebook, find a garage sale group for your area. The other thing you can do is there is a garage sale app. I don't use this one all that often, but I have used it in the past and it has worked really well for me. But you can go on to, let's see what the app is called, garage sale map. So look up garage sale map. I think that's probably how you'll find it. It will literally give you a map and it'll put little pinpoints of the people who have registered their garage sales. So you can go and I, I haven't used this in so long. I don't remember if it shows pictures of the items. I don't think so. I think it just tells you the address and then it can give you directions. So you can just hit like directions and it will, you know, give you the GPS directions to get to the garage sale. So that's a great thing to have. A lot of times what I will do is even if I'm not seeing any posts in the garage sale Facebook group, I will just drive through the neighborhoods that I am hoping to find sales in first, just driving looking for signs. And for my area, nice historic neighborhoods tend to be almost a guarantee that I'm gonna find something vintage. People that like old houses tend to like old things, and of course that's not true for every situation, but I have found that the nice historic neighborhoods, if you can find garage sales in them, you're going to find great vintage pieces. So that's a place to look. Also neighborhoods that have older residents is a great place to look as well because a lot of times they've collected things over the years and they have beautiful things that are in nice condition. So there's a few areas of town that I know um, are homes of older residents that have vintage collections and things like that. Just keep in mind, like it's kind of a situational thing, but also has proven to be true in a lot of cases for me. I know that if I'm like going really far to the west or really far to the east 
in my area, those are like suburban neighborhoods and they're almost always gonna be filled with like kids clothes, kids toys, and minimal vintage. Another thing that I forgot to mention about the Facebook groups is a lot of times they will post in there when they're having neighborhood garage sale days or weekends in like the surrounding towns. Cause like our city doesn't have a citywide garage sale, but a lot of the smaller towns nearby will. And those are always really nice cause then you can hit a lot in one day. And obviously that increases your chance of being able to find things that you're looking for. If you are in an area like I am here in Kansas where there are barn sales, almost always barn sales are treasure troves and I will always find great vintage stuff. If I can find a barn sale, I'm a happy lady because I almost always find really great pieces. So yeah, hopefully that's helpful for you as you're looking for garage sales. I think frequency is a big thing too. It's just like with thrifting, you have to go frequently to find stuff. I don't enjoy the thrift store hunt as much. I think the prices are high and I rarely find anything good, at least at the thrift stores in my area. I mean, I can find better things at antique stores and garage sale prices are unbeatable. So that's kind of my preference for going and finding things, but you do still have to go frequently. And there are so many days that I go and I don't find a single thing. It's just all about like, if you enjoy the hunt, there are treasures to be found out there. Lastly, I wanted to talk about estate sales and how to find them. I love estate sales. They are definitely going to be a little bit more expensive than you know garage sales but i do find a lot of really really great stuff my number one tip for estate sailing is to download an app called estatesales.net that is the app's name not just like a website name and it will show you a map of your area and then you can choose to look at today's estate sales or tomorrow's or the next seven days i believe is what it says and it will show you all of the different ones. The nice thing about this is you can pull up the estate sale and look through pictures. They almost always have tons of pictures of the types of items that they have. So you can easily see if it's something that you're going to find something at. You can get a really good idea of the style of decor that's gonna be available in the house. And the other benefit to using this app is they'll share local auctions as well. And you can go on and it will take you to the auction websites where you can actually place your bids and it tells you, you know, exactly where you go for pickup, what time pickup is, and you can go and bid on items. I have done that a couple of times. So yeah, I hope that those were some helpful tips and tools that will assist you in finding vintage treasures in your area. Hopefully we will be starting on some projects soon. So I've got like plenty of things to share with you and yeah, until then happy hunting and I'll see you next time. Bye.